This whole project was put together with a single 1x8, 8 foot long poplar board. I first started working on the two sides of the box. Since the total height will be around 10 inches and the board width is only 7 and a quarter inches wide, I'll need to glue two pieces together to reach my desired dimensions. I'll make marks every 13 inches or so for four total pieces, which I'll ultimately trim down later. This will be the width of the box sides. After the four pieces were cut out, I took them over to the jointer to flatten out one edge of each cutoff. This will make the edges nice and tight for the glue up. If you don't have a jointer, check to see the fit first. If there are some gaps, you might be able to skim a little off the edge with your table saw. And if that still doesn't do the trick, I'd recommend building a jointer jig for your table saw. There are a ton of videos out there on these and it'll definitely come in handy for future projects. Next, I'll glue up the boards and let them sit to dry overnight. Two tips here. Make sure you don't over tighten the clamps. I've done this in the past and it will typically cause your piece to bow. As soon as you see some glue squeeze out, it should be good. Also, I'd recommend adding some F clamps to the seam or calls to keep the boards nice and flat. While the sides are drying, I'll start working on the slats by cutting out two 17 inch long pieces from the remaining board. Once those are cut, let's get ready to take them over to the table saw and rip them down. After meticulously dialing in the fence to two inches, I ripped each piece and ended up with a total of six slats which I will then resaw on the table saw, yielding a total of 12 pieces, right around 3 8 of an inch in thickness. Resawing boards on the table saw is definitely an experienced cut, so make sure you're careful. If you don't feel 100% comfortable with this type of cut, I'd recommend either keeping the boards at 3 quarter inches and buying more stock, or getting thinner pieces from your local home center. The overall style is completely up to you. The next day I'll remove the two sides from the clamps and cut them down to their final dimensions, right around a foot wide and 10 inches tall. I'll use my crosscut sled to square up one side, which I'll reference against my fence to cut the pieces down to 12 inches. Then I'll work on cutting the height to 10 inches. Looking back, I didn't do this right. Ultimately, I was trying to measure out five inches in either direction from the seam of the two boards, so the seam was in the middle. I should have lined up the material I was keeping against the stop block rather than the waist. Either way, it all worked out in the end. I'm putting some tape on each side piece and a dab of super glue to lock the two pieces together. I'll be adding in some angles and a hole for the handle so this allows me to cut out both at the same time. For the angled cuts, I'll make a mark two inches down from the top and three inches from the side. I'll then connect those lines and then cut them out with my jigsaw. I'm 
can use a disc sander, orbital sander, or some old-fashioned elbow grease to sand down to the lines. I marked some lines to lay out the placement of my handle. After I had a general idea of how I wanted them to look, I drilled out two holes at the drill press, then removed the rest of the material with my jigsaw. My jigsaw cut wasn't exactly in line with the holes, so I sanded it down a bit until it looked presentable. A round over bit with my router helped soften the sharp edges of the handle. I sanded everything up to 220 grit. Next, I grabbed all my slats and cut them down to their final length on the miter saw. A stop block definitely helps make repeatable cuts here. Now it's time for assembly. I used glue and brad nails to hold everything together. The first two slats are definitely the most tricky since there's nothing keeping the sides together. I used my speed square to make sure everything was square here. While I work on the assembly, I'd just like to take a second and thank you for watching. If you've been enjoying the video so far, give it a like, leave a comment, and if you'd like to see more of my future videos, go ahead and press that subscribe button. Thanks. Now back to the build. I mixed some glue and sawdust to fill the nail holes. Since the sawdust for my sander was mostly from this project, it allowed me to match the color perfectly. Either I used too much glue or my glue dries a darker color. Either way, it looked great after it was sanded down. And that's pretty much it. The finishing is completely up to you. I ended up going with a dark walnut stain and then came back with three coats of spray polyurethane after the stain had dried. Let's be honest, the only way I'm shaking that can for two full minutes, as they say in the directions, is if I can get someone else to do it for me. Thanks, Tim.